Hey, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronix from Men's Photographer, and today we can create a brand new video. And this tutorial is about understanding your mixer brush tool settings for skin retouching. So, this tutorial basically is about uh, the mixer brush tool settings, uh, the do's and don'ts for your mixer brush when you're trying to blend the skin while doing your skin retouching in Photoshop. So, before I can go ahead, I can, I'm going to first of all go through the steps for uh, creating your frequency separation layers and creating the frequency separation group then after we're going to learn about the best settings or how to best best use your mixer brush tool when you're going to start doing your skin retouching and blending or evening out the skin tones on the model's face and i'm going to be sharing with you guys the best tricks of how to, uh, to notice or look out for those uh, unevenness in the skin tones in photoshop and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. Don't forget to give us feedback in the comment section. So let's kick in and first of all, first describe frequency separation. Basically, frequency separation is basically uh, a skin retouching technique that divides the image into two layers. That is the textures and the colors or skin tone. So it, it basically allows us to work on the textures alone and uh, also work on the skin tones or the colors alone on a portrait as we are doing skin retouching so this is the image you are going to be working with and uh, like I said we start by duplicating a background layer twice by clicking ctrl or command j twice then uh, we are going to name the middle layer it is usually our color or uh, skin tones or some people call it low frequency layer then the above layer is usually our texture or high frequency layer. So this tutorial is not about uh, frequency separation in depth. It is about the mixer brush tool and how to set it well and nicely. So stay tuned as we learn about this method. So we are going to first of all turn off the texture layer. So we want to remove the textures from uh, our color layer right here. You can see that. So we want to get rid of uh, the textures and remain with the skin tones or the colors in this very layer we have selected. Remember we have deactivated the texture or, or the high frequency layer. Then we are going to come to filter and as usual come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. So we are going to move this slider until we see, uh, we first of all have to look for that area that has more skin textures than the rest of the skin so we are going to go with uh, the nose area so we are going to move this slider until the radius uh, smoothens out the skin textures and remain with the colors or skin tones and we are also going to only remain uh, with only the colors and the skin tones while we can still notice uh, the facial structures so make sure your image is visible enough so just move uh, this slider like that until this texture starts to uh, disappear like that so we're going to move this i think at around seven we have lost out uh the textures in the face you can see you can notice no skin textures in the face of our model so just come and click ok so it is going to apply that i don't know why this is really slow so Come and select your texture or high frequency layer right here. So when you come and uh, do the selection on the texture layer, I'm still waiting for this PC to do some response. So activate it by clicking on the eye icon right there. So after activating it, uh, we're going to only remain with the textures in the high frequency layer right here so and in order to remain with uh, the textures right here uh, we are going to first of all remove colors from this layer so that we can remain with only the textures uh, in the topmost layer remember this only has the skin tones or the colors so for the above layer we are only going to be remaining with the textures so in order to do that you're going to come to image then come to apply image so when you click on apply image you'll get this tiny uh, window right here so remember we are subtracting uh, the textures from the color layer so come and select the color layer right here and 
choose the blending as a uh, subtract so when you click on subtract make sure your opacity is 100 the scale is 2 and offset 128 i've already i've always explained the reasons for this and make sure your preview is on so as you can see we only have the textures or the outlines for the image so just come and click okay like that so uh you can see now we have lost out on uh, the initial image like this you can now see we only have uh, the skin textures uh in this very layer so what we are going to do we are going to try to get back the image the way it was initially before so we're going to come right here to we're going to come to the blending and as a blending mode that uh, brings back the image uh it is called linear light so we're going to come right here to normal and click on a uh, linear light so when you click on linear light you'll get back the image uh the way it was initially before so we're going to put these two in a group right here by clicking uh control and clicking on both layers and click control or command g on the keyboard to group them so we're going to name this layer frequency separation so there shouldn't be a difference between the background layer and the frequency separation group so that means you have successfully divided the two layers or you have divided the image into these two layers right here so uh, when you're going to set up your Mr. brush tool first of all you have to know the areas you're going to try to uh, do the blending on so in order to see that here now i'm going to share with you guys uh, the trick uh, in which you have to notice those areas that have an even skin tones for your image so come right here click on or select the texture or high frequency layer so we're going to remember we want to create a layer on top of this that's, that's why we are selecting uh, the texture or high frequency layer so come to the adjustments right here and click on black and white so when you do click on black and white uh, your image is going to turn to black and white so right now we can't see those areas that don't have an even skin tones for this very image so just come and to the red channel and now darken it so when you darken it uh right now you notice that uh there are some areas in this image that don't have even skin tones you can see right here on the forehead of the model you can see there are unevenness in skin tones and there are like some kind of bumps uh, in the model skin so yeah, well, we want to transition this skin tone so that they can be really well and uh, have matching skin tones for our model skin i don't know if i make sense but uh right now we are going to learn about the mixer brush tool so right click under your brushes and get your mixer brush tool but uh, my brush tool is right here the mixer brush tool so we are learning about the mixer brush tool and not the brush tool in photoshop and how to set it for your frequency separation so when you select your mixer brush tool make sure you select uh, the color all of frequency layer so we want to learn about how to set it right when you're going to do your frequency separation for your images in photoshop so come right here and make sure you click on clean brush yeah so when you click on clean brush uh for our brush it is like when you're doing your painting and every time you want to apply maybe a different color on your painting there are those times when you have to first of all if at all you're using watercolors you have to first of all dip uh your brush in either water or any other cleaning substance to remove the previous color you may have i uh, used when you're painting or when you're using maybe oil colors or oil paints uh, you have to dip it in maybe kerosene or any other cleaning substance to get your brush clean so that you can uh, apply it on another part of your painting so basically uh, when we select this option clean brush uh, photoshop is, is just automatically going to help us clean the brush by itself so that we can apply different strokes when we are trying to blend the skin so it is going to be an automatic process so make sure this right here is selected right here so these two right here 
uh, work hand in hand. So when you uh, make when you select this option right here, like if at all I leave my cursor right here, it is going to show you uh, basically what I was trying to explain. So right now we are going to learn about uh, the wetness. So when your wetness is all the way maybe to one hundred percent, and we try uh, to so you can increase your brush size by using the left and the right brackets on the keyboard. So when your when the wetness is really high and you try uh, blending, you're going to end up losing uh, having unevenness in the textures, and uh, it is going to be applying a really a rough kind of skin tone for your image. So let's see uh, what it has done right here. So that's the before after you can see what uh, the darkness is creating uh, due to the unevenness in the skin tone variations and due to the wetness because the brush is too wet so it can just pick color from anywhere and just uh, splashes it on uh, the image so right now I'm going to show you guys uh, the best settings for the mixer brush tool so we are going to come to our history and uh, we are going to first of all undo all that like that so when you uh when you apply a high wetness you're going to be uh having a uh, more of a plastic image and you're going to lose out on the nice and beautiful skin tones for your image so make sure you have a wetness below 10 percent so i know different retouchers uh use different mixer brush tool settings but i found out that these work best for me that's why i'm sharing uh with you guys so make sure the load is 75 percent so the mix is 90 percent so uh, we want it to really blend highly and we want the strokes to be vivid enough that's why uh, the load is at 75, the mix at 90, and the flow 100. So I tried and tested these settings and I found out they work best for me when I'm doing my frequency fashion. And make sure you're working right here. You can see you're working on this layer only. So when you check this layer, it is going to sample from all these layers. So when you try to apply your mixer brush like that, you can see is as well sampling from uh, the texture layer right there you can see that it has added some more textures on uh, the model skin so uh, make sure this right here is not checked or much so we are going to try to blend using this setting so uh, wetness 9 load 75 the mix at 90 and the flow 100 so we're going to try to uh, blend our image make sure you're on your color all of frequency layer so we're going to try and see what this is going to give us with just a few strokes of a brush right here on uh, the forehead. And when you're doing your mixing, make sure you mix the highlights alone, the mid-tones alone, and the shadows. So we have some sort of shadows right here. I'm mixing them alone. Then when you come to this transition right here, make sure you just come and just brush over that transition to give it that smooth transitioning are uh, within uh, the skin tones of our model. So we have a highlight here. So when you have this highlight right here, just come and just blend it alone. So like that. So let's see what this has uh, created for us so far. And make sure you don't come, come back and mix a particular area because it's going to double the wetness. So if at all I brush here once, it is going to apply a wetness of 9. So if I come back and apply again, it is going to double 9 and we shall have a double of 9. That's 18. So let's see what we have done so far. So turn this off and we see uh, before, after, before, after. You can see what uh, just a few uh, brush strokes have contributed to uh, the image and the skin tones uh, overall or in general. So just continue doing this process so we have some kind of uh, these skin tones right here so you can just come and just try to blend them really nice and well like that so 
just take your time while doing this then after this you can just keep on checking on your before and after before and after you can as well blend uh, the skin tones without uh, your help layer or the black and white layer because if at all you trust your site anyway you can go ahead and work without the black and white layer but for purposes of seeing uh, really well and nicely you need this help layer or the black and white layer so activate it and look for those unevenness in the skin tone so you can see we have these shadows right here we blend them alone so we have this transitioning just come and blend in the middle while it is transitioning from uh, the shadows to the highlights so you can as well come and blend at uh, this nose highlight so turn this off so you have to keep on checking on your progress every now and again so you can see this is the before after before after you can see just a simple uh, strokes of a brush have really contributed to uh, the overall beautifying of uh, the skin tones and evening them out and creating a really beautiful image or portrait in Photoshop. So basically today's tutorial, I think that is all for today's tutorial and it has been about the best settings for your mixer brush tool when you're going to do your frequency separation and when you're trying to even out skin tones for your images or for your beauty images in Photoshop. I'm Ronix from Ronix Photography and don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if at all you're watching for the very first time from this channel and don't forget to give us feedback in the comment section. I'm Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in yet another retouching tutorial and stay safe.